Hey guys, um, Jay Young here. I've been busy lately. Been, there's been a ton of stuff going on, but you know, hopefully I'll be like I'll be less busy over these next few days. Um, <clears throat> I'm planning to film everything up to chapter 15. Um, so chapter 16 is a really cool chapter, but um, I do advise you guys read that. But um, that chapter is not covered in the brain bead, um, at least at our state level. Um, there's there's been no questions on chapter 16, so. Yeah, so I won't film a video on it. You guys can just come to me um, for individual questions on that if you need to. Alright, so chapter 3. Vision. So, vision is the most important sense in our body. 30% of our brain is devoted to vision. Um, so, how do we process this vision? Well, light's going to enter your eye. It's going to hit the sheet of cells at the back of your eye, the retina. Um, the retina is going to send signals to the optic nerve. Signals travel via the optic nerve to the primary visual cortex at the back of the brain. So when light enters your eye, it's going to enter through the lens. And how much light enters um, is controlled by the size of the pupil. The size of the pupil itself is controlled by the iris. That's simple enough. Um, so when the light hits the uh, retina at the back of your eye, um, it's going to trigger the photoreceptor cells. You have 125 million uh, photoreceptor cells in each human eye. Um, 95% of these photoreceptor cells are rod cells, which process light and dark vision. So, you know, that's how you see in dim light, um, for example. And the other 5% um, of the photoreceptors are the cone cells, which give you color vision. There are three types of cone photoreceptor cells, red, green, and blue. They come together to form uh, the different colors that you see. Um, so, it's kind of obvious that you guys have two eyes. Um, that's binocular vision, um, so that's pretty obvious, so, yeah, so I don't really need to explain that. Um, so, yeah, so once the retina um, processes um, the signals, it's going to send the signals to the optic nerve, and the optic nerve um, is the pathway um, for the retina to send the signals to the primary visual cortex. So, if there's something that you have to remember, it's that the optic nerves um, Cross, cross over, so um, they cross over at the optic chiasm. Anything from the right side of your eye is going to go to the left side of your brain, and vice versa. So that's some, that's a crucial detail that you have to remember. Um, before um, the signals reach the back of your brain, um, where the primary visual cortex is, um, they are going to be processed in the thalamus. Um, the thalamus has a nucleus called the lateral geniculate nucleus that processes um, visual information, and you guys have to know that. So, the other the last thing I want to leave you with um, in vision is that, um, well, two things. Um, the first thing being that vision is, um, there's a lot of things going at once. You have to process the shape of what you're seeing, the color, the location, um, is it moving? You know? So, there are a lot of things going, a lot of things going on um, at once with vision. Um, the other thing I want to um, leave you guys with is that um, uh, the, the disease uh, strabismus. So, they, they talked about the disease strabismus briefly. Um, so I'll, I'll just explain it briefly. Um, strabismus um, is when your eyes don't align properly. Um, so you tend to favor vision in one eye, you lose vision in the other. So the use it or lose it principle. So beyond the age of eight, um, this disease becomes permanent um, if you don't treat it. Um, they, scientists used to treat this um, disease um, after the age of four. Nowadays, um, it's treated before the age of four um, so that you can restore um, vision properly. All right, so that's vision. Let's move on to hearing. Hearing is um, crucial. That's how you um, process uh, speech. So I don't really need to explain why that's important. I mean, you do want to be able to communicate, right? So yeah, so hearing. Um, just like vision, hearing it is, has a lot of things going at once. You have to you know, hear the pitch. You have to process the loudness. Um, where is the sound coming from? Things like that. Um, so how is sound processed? So. Um, the vibrations are going to enter your ear. It's going to hit the, they're going to hit the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. This is going to trigger the hammer or malleus. Um, the hammer is going to um, transmit the vibration to the anvil or incus, and then that's going to trigger, tri uh, transmit the vibration to the stirrup or stapes. And the stapes then pushes on the ov oval window, which separates the air-filled middle ear from the inner ear, fluid-filled inner ear. Um, and that produces pressure waves um, in the cochlea, 
the snail shaped um, organ inside your inner ear. So when this happens, um, it's going to um, vibrate the tectorial membrane, um, which is um, right on top of the basilar membrane. Um, and as a result of the tectorial membrane's um, vibrations, um, the hair cells are going to be, the cilia on the hair cells are um, going to be displaced. So the hair cells align the basilar membrane, right? And um, the cilia on these hair cells are going to be displaced when the tectorial membrane starts vibrating. As a result, um, you're going to have signals going um, via the auditory nerve to the auditory cortex. Um, and the auditory cortex is in the uh, temporal lobe. So the way your brain responds to pitch is that um, different parts of your membrane are going to be um, vibrated depending on the uh, pitch. So um, a different part of your membrane is triggered by the high sound of a violin compared to the really, really low sound of like a bass. Um, yeah, so that's the basics of hearing. Um, let's go into taste and smell. So that's how, taste and smell, that's how we process our chemical world, right? So that's also pretty important. I mean, I hope that you guys um, want to taste your food. <laughs> so we have um, five main tastes, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. Umami is just Japanese for savory. Um, and um, But these tastes by themselves, um, you can't taste your food with them. You have to have an interaction with the tastes and the smell in order to actually taste your food. So the taste part. Um, so taste and chemicals in our food are going to be detected by taste buds, which are special structures on the um, protuberances in your tongue called papillae. So um, you have about 5,000 to 10,000 taste buds. Each one has about 50 to 100 taste cells. Um, and these cells are going to be um, triggered by the taste ins, and they're going to send signals via cranial nerves to taste regions in the brainstem. From there, they're going to... Um, the impulses are going to go to the thalamus and then they're going to go to a specific area of the um, cerebral cortex, um, the caudal orbital cortex, and that's where um, you can um, process your taste signals. Now for the smell part, so odorings are going to be detected by um, sensory neurons in the um, mucous membrane lining the roof of your nose. Here um, the signals are going to be processed and then sent to the olfactory bulbs on the underside of the frontal lobe of our brain. So, for perspective, let me get my brain. The act, my brain actually labeled um, where the olfactory bulbs are. So, if you see here, you see this yellow, yellow here. That was dramatic. You see the yellow part here, um, and you see this um, bulb here. That's where the um, olfactory bulb is. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's how you um, process um, taste and smell. So the primary um, olfactory cortex where you process smell is really close to the caudal orbital cortex where you process taste. The two of them together obviously are going to form um, your flavors. So how do you taste your food? So yeah, so um, that's the taste and smell. Now touch and pain. It's the final part. Um, yeah, so we sense touch via the touch receptors um, in our skin. Um, the layout of um, touch signals, um, or the, the layout of how we process touch signals is highly um, topographic. So what does that mean? So your body, um, the touch sensations in your body are represented in an orderly fashion in different levels in the nervous system. So if there's a larger part um, of your cortex um, devoted to a certain region of your body, it's going to be more sensitive to touch. So for example, larger areas of your cortex are devoted to um, uh, the sensations from your fingertips, which are really, really sensitive, much more than, um, for example, I don't know, the base of your foot. Um, so, yeah, so that's um, how the um, somatosensory cortex um, uh, is uh, organized. You can tell um, when you look at like a homunculus, you can tell that's the reason why um, like the body it's, um, comes out so distorted, um, because um, certain areas are um, more sensitive to touch than others. Now, um, and we really can't talk about um, touch without excluding the um, talk of pain. So, pain. So, pain is, is also um, sensed in our body. Um, it's sensed by um, receptors called nociceptors. And chemically, um, pain depends on the um, lipid messengers called the prostaglandins, which are produced by the cyclooxygenase or COX enzyme. 
So prostaglandins contribute to a lot of pain diseases such as allodynia, where um, even normal stimulus causes like a huge amount of pain. Um, pain messages are transmitted via, either via the small myelinated fibers or the uh, even smaller C fibers, which are unmyelinated. unmyelinated. You guys know that myelin speeds up um, reactions, so you, um, it's, you can kind of guess um, what kind of pain belongs to what kind of fiber. Um, if it's a really fast pain, like a sharp pain, um, like you, you got like, you know, pricked, that would be um, the small myelinated fibers at action. If you have a dull pain, like a headache, that would be coming from the C fibers. Yeah, so um, pain messages, they can be suppressed. Um, so we're going to be talking about this later when we talk about um, things like um, morphine and how they work. Um, yeah, but pain can be um, uh, suppressed. Um, that means that's how endorphins work, right? So, yeah, so just know that. Um, so those are the, I think, yeah, so I think that's the basics um, of this chapter. Um, there are um, other things in this chapter that maybe that I didn't really cover, um, or maybe you have more questions about. Um, just leave uh, questions in the comments, and I'll be happy to respond to them. Well, thanks, guys. See you later.